warden in there? Yes, sir. He's with Morgan. It's tough on those guys when the time gets short. That committee came through this morning. Say, why don't they get off the warden's back? They're waiting to see him now. Look, your wife's been sick, but she's better now. She'll be on to see you any day. Did she say that? I'm telling you she did. She's just run herself down working on your appeal. Frank, the committee's finished their tour. I'll be with you in a minute. Well, Morgan, I've told you about her. What do you want me to tell her about you? You tell her I'm all right now. Okay. Thanks. Think it's a good idea to build him up like that? I don't know, Tom. You want me to tell him his wife's a tramp who doesn't care what happens to him? What if he wins his appeal? Then he'll have something to balance the bad news. Give me a buzz after the committee leaves, huh? I may be the one who leaves. Ah, right, go on, Warden. This time they're going to make your job official. Thanks, Ward Healers. <laughs> Pretty optimistic, isn't he? The guards bought that when I made him acting warden. Oh, one of the boys, eh? Mrs. Carmichael? Mm -hmm. Hello, Jim. Hello, Frank. Mrs. Mayline. Gentlemen, sorry I held you up. Would you be seated, please? Understand you've had a good look at things? Yes. You've made some interesting changes here since Warden Donovan's death. Probably. I've been running this place for over six months now. Oh, no changes you would call radical. Frank's been around long enough to know that... Yes, of course, Superintendent. But we can't base our decision on mere seniority. Mrs. Maynard, if seniority were my only qualification, I wouldn't want this job. Listen, this is small talk. Maybe you are doing a good job here. But are you doing it at a price? The budget people shudder every time your requisitions come in. Good, Mr. Corby. That's how I feel when they turn me down. Your head cook tells me you once almost fired him for trying to save your money. You don't save money on food, not in a prison. Good food, interesting work, decent recreations. They're a lot cheaper than malingering and riots. Hmm. Is that a statistic or an opinion? Call it what you like. I've seen the conditions both ways. We all like to think of ourselves as humanitarians, but... It's not humanitarianism. It's trial and error result. Frank, the committee knows what we're up against. They're only trying to help. I don't think Mr. Carmichael believes that. What I don't believe is that I should have to be questioned like a green rookie applying for a job, not after spending half my life doing that job. Frank. No, no, Jim, let me finish. You've kept me hanging for six months. How do you expect me to build a program or maintain discipline when even the inmates know that I might be replaced overnight? I see no reason to disturb Mr. Carmichael any longer. Uh, look, I, uh, I blew up. I'm sorry. I... Committee's speeches, that, that's out of my line. I... I want the job, sure. But the important thing is I can do that job if you give me the authority to do it right. You'll have our decision by the end of the week. Coming, Hardy. I'll be with you in a minute. Why didn't you just ask them to can you? Oh, I tried to play patty cake with them, but... Uh... I did my best, Frank. Yeah, I know. I appreciate it, too. You going home for lunch? Hilda's waiting to hear the good news. Yeah. Well, give her my regards, will you? Mm-hmm. the new car ready and paid for I'm picking it up as soon as I leave here lucky boy I'd invite you to stay for lunch except 
I got a feeling the food's gonna be lousy today. Well, thanks for dropping in again, Roy. What do you mean, thanks? How many brothers you got? <laughs> Yes, dear. Don't look. I've got a surprise for you. All right. Come on, Rainbow. Come on, Butch. For he's Pretty a good. jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, careful. One false move and you'll launch me. Well, the boys warned me not to marry a party girl. What's to eat? They, they didn't say no. Just about. They'll make it official in a few days. Well, look, Hildy, it's not the end of the world. I'm not sorry. I'm mad. You deserve that job. Well, Jim gave them both barrels. It just didn't work out. Look, if we can't drink to celebrate, let's drink to forget, hmm? Oh, stop it, Frank. You don't have to be babied every time there's bad news. Isn't there anything we can do? Sure, we can have a few signs painted and get the inmates to pick it. Oh, I wish I could afford to tell them to take their job and their committees and... But why don't you? We have a little saved up and... Well, if these are the rainy days... Well, I don't want you to worry about me if you decide to tell them off. Look, we're talking like I've already been fired. The only thing is that I have to take out the old uniform and... go back to being a yard captain. That's not so bad. Why should I suddenly care about being a warden, huh? Because it's your job and it's coming to you. Maybe, maybe not. You know, this may sound strange, sweetheart, but I've never gotten over the feeling that my prison work is temporary. Not since I took my first job as a guard. You had to settle for less then. You shouldn't have to do it now. Well, the bridges were built anyway. Not by you. Only I hadn't stepped in front of that car. Hildy, you promised me you wouldn't. Stop blaming myself, really. I, I stopped doing that a long time ago. It's just that I... I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. How to say what? Say that I... I love you, and I... I love you for being disappointed and not pretending that you aren't. Hildy, how did I ever get so lucky? <laughs> oh, <Frank. laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Civilization has saved me from the caveman. Unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right over. What is it, Frank? Some trouble in the mess hall. Serious? No, no. You uh, keep that champagne cold so we can pick up where we left off, huh? And you be careful. <laughs> No tricks, Warden. Start driving. Where? The main gate. Well, what do you? I said start driving.
comes the warden. Open the gate. We gotta dump this car. Are you sure that kid's gonna be there? He'll be there. Will you please? Let me know just as soon as you know anything at all. There's the kid, all right. Hi, Dad. Where's Johnny? That's what I'd like to know. I thought maybe he was with you. I've been calling the house since lunch. Oh, stop growling. You want clean shirts and something for dinner, don't you? I ought to marry you off, that's what. Johnny on a service call? No, oh, who knows where he's disappeared to. He took the truck out before lunch, and he's been gone over two hours now. <gasps> it's just McGregor's thorough service. Very funny, <laughs> except the two of my best customers are boiling mad. Oh. oh, what's the use of talking about it? He's been like this all week. Coming and going, never asks me a thing. You'd think I was working for him. Now, that's not fair. He's the best man you've ever had, and you know it. I know that's what you think. That I know. But maybe I don't think that's enough. Johnny's enough for me, Dad. He also is a vet. He also has a good job, and I've got a pretty good business here. Oh, Dad, you're a hopeless Scotsman. Well, I'm still your father, and I still have a right to say what I think. The lad drifts into town without a penny in his pocket. I give him a break, and suddenly you want to make him part of the family. Do you want me to like it? Like it or not, you better get used to it. Oh, look at us. We used to be able to talk things out. You know I've only got you to care for. We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin on the prison break. Police have just reported finding the car in which the convicts escaped. The fleeing men have apparently switched to another unidentified vehicle. Roadblocks have been established at key junctions, and police are checking all reports of missing vehicles. Did you hear that? You what? think they... Police believe that the escaped convicts may have stolen or commandeered the vehicle. You can cooperate with the police... Maybe we better call the, the police. Until these men have About been what? We now Dad, you don't think Johnny... Annie, he's been out with the truck for a long time. Maybe the lad's in trouble. service station. It was last seen in the possession of John Hutchins, the station mechanic, aged 24, six feet, black hair, brown eyes, dressed in blue coveralls. All units are again warned that these men are dangerous and may be armed.
Burkhart! Sixty buck a week grease monkey. What about those five new hundred dollar bills you were carrying? It's an advance from this guy Roy Burkhardt. That I can believe. Look, how much were you supposed to get when you took him across the border? I told you they made me drive. One of them had a gun on me all the time. Let's try making some sense, Hutchins. First, you say you never saw Roy Burkhardt before last week. You go out to fix his flat, a routine service call. The first time Burkhardt lays eyes on you, he gives you 500 bucks in advance because he likes some business proposition you made him. Now, who you kidding? He made me the proposition. He asked me about the old Thompson garage. The place where they switch cars? Yeah. He said when the new highway was built, it'd be a gold mine location. What new highway? He said the state legislature was kind of bad. He said, he said, I know, I know. Look, there's no highway coming in there. Never was. Now, the cop's dead, mister. And whether you're lying or just plain dumb, he's still dead. All right, Hutchins. Let's read it your way. Suppose Burkhart was really interested in remodeling an old gas station. 
Why did he pick you? Why you? Because he liked my ideas. Your ideas? Him. What did you tell him? I didn't tell him. I showed him. I've been looking around for a place of my own for the last couple of months. Even drew up a rough sketch of the kind of layout I'd like. Where you got this sketch tucked away? I had it in the truck with me. When Burkhardt called me, I took it along, figuring he wanted to talk business. Put a search crew on the wreck first thing in the morning. Yeah. All right, Hutchins. How come when you're already working in a gas station, working for a man who figures to become your father-in-law, how come you didn't take your so-called ideas to him? Working for McGregor's one thing, and taking out his daughter's another. Maybe I just wanted to prove something. What? That you're not a punk kid from the Chicago streets? Lay off me, cop. That's better. Now I know you. Hello, Warden. How do you feel? Oh, fine. You know, this can wait till morning if you're too beat. Oh, no, I'm all right. Recognize him? Yes, he was... he was driving the truck. Joe the Manly Slug coming out of the car. Did you see the guns they held on me? Did you hear them threaten me? No, I'm afraid I didn't, son. But like he says, I only saw him for a second before someone hit me, and the next thing I remember, I was in the truck. Burkhardt and Miller were shooting at... You were driving. This guy Burkhardt's brother was sitting next to me. He must have heard him. He knows what he heard. You're listening to testimony, mister. Thanks, Warden. We know you're very tired. There isn't anything else? Uh, nothing to keep you for, Warden. Thanks again. Sure. I just sprained my wrist a little and scratched myself up. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. I guess I'm not much of a hero's wife when the hero isn't around. You shouldn't be here to begin with. You just wait till I get you home, young lady. All right, Johnny. It's up to you. Do you want us to start all over again, Johnny? Is Johnny Hutchins in there? Sorry, Miss. No visitors allowed. But I must see him. Oh, you, you have no right to, Johnny. Miss McGregor? Yes. Oh, why can't I see him? He hasn't any other friends or family. He's lucky. The cop he killed had a big family. Two boys and three girls. Let us stay a few minutes. But don't leave them alone, officer. All right, Lieutenant. Didn't think they'd let you talk to me. You know what they're saying? Yes, Johnny. I know. How is he? I don't know. They're blaming him for that policeman's death. Will it do him any good if you get involved? Do you think Johnny wants that? It's what I want. Can't you understand? If he's in trouble, I'm in trouble. What are you afraid of? This might ruin your business. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I know what this is doing to you. I shouldn't have said what I did. We're both sorry, but that isn't helping Johnny. I have to see Charlie Raines. At this time of night? Johnny needs a lawyer right away. But Annie. When police arrived at the scene, 
Warden Carmichael, despite his injuries, risked his life once again to halt the last desperate attempt at escape by Carl Burkhardt. Leader well, the committee the reads that in the paper. In an eerie moonlit I'll bet you tomorrow battle, they'll come Carmichael crawling to you. Killed... Such modesty. Sure, one night's publicity is worth half a life of hard work. I know, darling. I wouldn't go through another night like this for all the jobs in the world. What's done is done, and some good comes of it. What good? A job? Something to keep us going from day to day? Hildy, do you know what Burkhart and Miller were in for? The convicts? A dozen payroll stick-ups. But the money never turned up. Well, what's that got to they do? They had it put away, hidden. They were going to skip the country, but they weren't going to leave that money behind, not those babies. Frank, what are you trying to tell me? Burkhart's brother brought that money along. It was in the truck with us, a suitcase full of it. In the truck? What is it, Frank? I didn't know myself until Burkhart was dead, and there it was, the suitcase busted open, maybe a hundred thousand in cash. A hundred thousand dollars, Hildy. You took it? No, but I got it buried near the truck. I tell you, I took a good look at that cash and bingo. There were all our troubles up in smoke. But why, Frank? What for? I just told you what for, so I don't have to beg anyone for a job that's coming to me. Any job. Is that so hard to understand? Frank, I, I can't believe I'm sitting here listening to this. It doesn't make any sense. hundred thousand dollars makes plenty of sense. You, you could take it back now, right away. You could tell them that you were I'll tell them nothing. Nobody knows about that money. Nobody even cares. The insurance companies chalked it off years ago. Don't you see, honey, it's our break? The one in a million everybody waits for? Not if we have to steal. Darling, I, I didn't mean it that way. Just... Just that... I don't know which hurts most. Taking the money, or did you feel we need it so badly? Hildy, don't you know what this will mean? The house you've always wanted, the trips you've dreamed about? Maybe that's what hurts the most. The feeling that you did this for my sake. What if I did? What's so terrible about a man doing something for his wife? Because you... You wouldn't have... I've done it if I were more than half a wife. Frank. Frank, if you love me, you... I do love you, Hildy. You're all that counts for me. Nobody. Nothing else. And it's gonna be all right, sweetheart. I promise you. After he called, I took the truck and went out to meet him at the old Thompson garage. In the middle of a busy morning? How did you explain such a, an unusual absence to your employer? I... I told him it was a service call. Well, if this appointment with Roy Burkhart was part of a deal that you'd have us believe was totally legitimate, why did you find it necessary to lie to your boss? Objection, Your Honor! It wasn't exactly a lie. Objection, Your Honor! Wasn't it, Mr. Hutchins? Then how shall we know when you are telling us exactly the truth? Your Honor, I object! The objection sustained. The district attorney's questions and the witness answers shall be stricken from the record. Now, let's see, Johnny. You spoke of a drawing that you'd shown Roy Burkhart. This drawing was supposedly the basis of your business relationship with him. You said, too, that it was in the truck. That's right. Do you realize that we have no proof of the existence of that drawing other than your own statement? I had it on the seat right beside me. I know I did. Now then, besides yourself, Warden Carmichael was the only survivor of that wild ride and subsequent wreck. And yet he's testified that he saw or heard nothing to confirm your story that you were an unwilling member of that group. Now, can you think of any reason why Warden Carmichael should lie?
No, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. Does the defense have anything further? No, Your Honor. The defense rests. The witness may stand down. Your Honor, the state requests a brief recess before introducing rebuttal testimony. Very well. to be called again? Me? I've told all that I know. How bad is it, Charlie? Not as bad as it sounds. Think they believe him? Mostly no, but well, that shouldn't matter legally. The state hasn't proven any contradiction to Johnny's story. I wish that drawing of his had shown up. We'd all be on our way home. Thanks, Charlie. Never doubted him. Even in the beginning when you hardly knew him. I know you. Now she kisses me when she's in love with someone else. You should have taken me out on Saturday nights instead of just Tuesdays and Thursdays. I didn't know what you looked like without dirty knees and pigtails. I wasn't going to waste my blue suit on that. A girl never really falls in love with the guy next door. There's no mystery left. Court's in session. You may proceed, Mr. Lang. State calls William Kiley to the stand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your full name. William Kiley. Take the stand. Mr. Kiley, will you please tell the court your present address and situation? I'm an inmate at the state penitentiary. 30 years to life. The court's already familiar with the details of the escape attempt in which you participated. I'd like you to tell us now if your plans included the assistance of any Confederates outside the prison walls. Burkhardt's brother, Roy. We had a time for him to get us the warden for a shield. The warden's car, too. Were there any other persons involved in your planned escape? Well, we had to figure the warden's car would be too hot to keep very long. So the day of the break, Roy told us he'd hired a kid named Johnny Hutchins to have another car waiting. Get to the line! I never... Among those who were present in Superior Court this afternoon when Judge Robert Pryor sentenced John Hutchins to death. As in all convictions that carry the death penalty, an appeal is automatic. The weather must be changing or something. There's a letter for you from the prison board. The decision of this board is that your status be changed from acting warden to that of permanent warden of the state institution. It's mighty nice of them. You gonna turn it down? Turn it. How can I do that, turn it down? Start a lot of questions that can only lead to trouble. No, I'll be their warden for a year or so. Why not? A year or so, then what? Then anything we want in the world. Who's that? Are you expecting someone? Mr. Carmichael, I'm Ann McGregor. Yes, I know. 
Could I talk to you for just a few minutes? Oh, I'm sorry. Come in, please. It's my wife, Hilda, Miss McGregor. I hope you don't mind, Mrs. Carmichael. No, not at all. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Would you, would you like some coffee? No, thanks. You probably know that Johnny Hutchins and I were going to... We were going together. We're terribly sorry about what's happened. We're appealing, of course, but that will only delay. I mean, it won't change anything unless we have sufficient grounds, some new evidence. I wanted to ask you, Mr. Carmichael, if there was anything you left out of your testimony. Why, well, don't think I know what you mean. Something the convicts might have said about Johnny, or, or the way they treated him. Well, there must have been something to show you he wasn't one of them. Well, I wish there was, Miss McGregor, but I can't say that I know that Johnny was innocent without deliberately lying. It's not a lie. He is innocent. <laughs> It's going to be all right, dear. I know it will. I'm sorry. Just that I've tried everything else. I, I thought about the sketch Johnny spoke of. I've been searching that wreck for days. I don't know what else to do. Except I know I mustn't stop looking. I'd better go. Frank. Frank, you take her home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. No, I'm fine. My car's right outside. Thank you, both of you, for your patience. It's a shame about that young man. Shame about that policeman they killed, too. Everything's a shame. But he, he was just driving. I don't know. Maybe he is guilty. But to execute a young boy just because... The jury found him guilty. What do you want me to do about it? I didn't... Never mind about him. Did you hear what she said? She's been poking around that wreck. What if she finds that money, huh? Fine mess. Where are you going? Out to get it. What do you think? Frank, is... Isn't there any way we... Don't start that again, Hilly. I tell you, I know what I'm doing. I'll be right back. It's okay, I'll be in a minute.
Thought you were in bed. Couldn't sleep. If so, maybe you ought to take something. What's the matter, Frank? Matter? Nothing's the matter. Everything's fine. Did anything go wrong? Wrong? No, I just told you. Everything's fine. I'm just tired. He'll leave dead tired. I'm going to bed. I see, it's definite. Much obliged. Morgan's appeal has been turned down. I guess it figured. He's been asking about his wife again. Did you hear anything? He's got a week to sweat out the governor. Yeah. The Hutchins kid was committed this morning. He's outside. Okay. Amen. I uh, guess we know each other, Johnny. How do you feel? Well, one way or another, you're going to be here for a while, so the best thing you can do is make it easy on yourself. All right, all right, skip the pep talk. You're a young fellow, Johnny, with no criminal record behind you. I know about these things, and I tell you that sentence won't stick. You mean maybe they'll let me off with life, huh? Well, that would mean parole someday. Yeah, someday, 20 years from now. Uh, if there's anything you want, uh... Anything you need, just tell the guard. He'll let me know. Tom. Keep him out of the condemned row. Put him in one of the regular blocks, huh? Are you kidding? He's not a troublemaker, so why make him sit in stool? Let's try it for a couple of days, huh? If you say so. Anything else? Oh. Yeah? There's a Miss McGregor at the visitor's gate. Wants to see John Hutchins. Well, didn't you tell her that visitors are not permitted the first day? Yes, sir. She says if she can't see him, she wants to see you. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm too busy for that. Check her through and let her see Hutchins. Yes, sir. Johnny. How are you? They haven't tortured me yet. Charlie would be here, except he's so busy with the appeal. He's trying to get a big criminal lawyer from upstate. That'll cost, won't it? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Not as long as I have my, my little cheerleader. Oh, John. Look at me feeling sorry for myself. Annie, I don't want you getting wrought up over this. You understand? I mean it. I love you, John. Don't, honey, please. I just want to get you out of here. I want you. Annie, listen to me. Take it easy. Boy, me. Johnny, don't. I'm all right. You have to expect a girl to carry on once in a while. I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. You say you would be interested. Fine. First thing in the morning. Yes, sir, and thank you. 
Good night. Will he come? His fee is $5,000. Five? And he'd be doing us a favor, believe me. All right, you say we need him, we'll get him. I've already told Johnny. Annie, I'm talking dollars and cents cash. You listening, Mac? It's gonna take money to save that boy's life. Oh, never mind, Charlie. Dad, if you don't... You wanna help Johnny or win an argument? You want me to give you $5,000 to make that boy innocent? Even if he isn't? Then give me the money. Give it to me, your daughter. Or am I guilty of something, too? And I'm not the jury that convicted him. I'm the man he worked for. And I'm also your father. Why didn't he come to me with his ideas and ambitions before all this started? Because he wanted to show you he could do something on his own. Or because he didn't believe in us half as much as you want me to believe in him. Good evening. Morton Carmichael. I'm Todd McGregor. How do you do? Won't you come in? Thank you. I hope I'm not disturbing anyone. Is it something about Johnny? Is something wrong? No, no, I, uh, I don't want to worry you folks. It's just that, well, being a witness, I feel more involved with Johnny than I do with most of the men who come up there. And I was wondering how his appeal is coming along. Too early to tell. If we had any new kind of evidence to show the court, anything. Now, Mr. Raines feels that it might help to bring in a more experienced lawyer. Well, that's a good idea. Well, I can't see how that would alter the facts in the case. Facts is a loose word, Mac. Anything a jury believes is a fact. Right, Warden? No. Jameson, he's the guy. He could help us all right if anyone can. Thank you. Well, the boy should have every possible chance. I'm a little surprised at your attitude, Warden. Those convicts tried to kill you. And you yourself testified that Johnny drove for them. But I didn't say he was one of them. I mean, I didn't know one way or the other. Since then, I've had a chance to know Johnny and just talk with him. I know every alibi in the book. I can spot a phony alibi a mile off. I can't give you any legal reason for believing that boy, but I do. Charlie. We still need that legal reason. That's why I want to call in Jameson. Well, what are you waiting for? Men like that come pretty high. I see. Well, I'm not a rich man, but if it's money you need, I... No offense, sir, and we do appreciate it, but I'm talking about $5,000. Well... Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> I might have known that's way out of my bracket. I, uh, I'm sorry. I guess the only thing I can do is promise you that Johnny will be treated well, and if you ever want to see him or me, that it's getting late. Thank you very much, Mr. Carmichael. What for? You've nothing to thank me for. Charlie, get Mr. Jamison back on the phone and tell him to get the next plane out here. Thank you, Mina. Dad! My feelings haven't changed. But I'm not going to let a few dollars prove me right. Okay, then. I want to make a person-to-person -person call to L.C. Jameson, Chicago. I don't like it, Lieutenant. Warden's orders. Well, if he's going to turn condemned men loose down here, I want a gun for a transfer. Hold the light. Better not kid. No one wins fights around here except the screws. Why'd you do it? What'd you think? I was going to sit here and let you take off with all that dough? What? 
Come on, kid. We got no time for games. Where's your stash? What though? What are you talking about? My hundred grand Burkhardt's brother had in that suitcase. You think I helped him break out for a pat on the back? You're nuts. You got me sent here for that? There wasn't any money. Hey, Kylie, you want to have a catch? Later. They'll give the stuff to someone else if I don't use it. I said later, beat it. Listen, kid. Burkhardt, Miller, and me, we had it set to skip the country. And we didn't figure to do it broke. That money was there, and it didn't just disappear. If there was any money, the police would have found it. Sure. Except that you found it first. You're the only one in a bunch who came out alive, you and the warden. Listen. I know every door, wall, every inch of this place. If you give me half that dough, I'll get us both out where we can spend it. Just like that, huh? That size bundle makes it worth a try. Getting out is tough enough. The real trick is to stay out. You don't get far without traveling money. What do you say? You boys having fun? Yeah, we were just discussing the rising costs of files and hacksaws. Well, walk a little. It's good for you. You hear what I said? I've got to have time to think about it. Think about what? Think about them strapping you into that chair, turning on the gas. And that's why Kali lied about me. He thinks I know what happened to that money. If there was any money to begin with. Money or no money, he lied about me. You think he'd admit that in court? That's your job, not mine. All right, don't. Maybe there was money involved. Kylie's no dummy. Hundreds of guys in here would promise the moon to break out. But why did Kylie believe Burkhart and Miller? Well, the police searched every foot of it. They didn't find any money. They didn't find my drawing either. What about before the police got there? Before you and Burkhart came to? Somebody could have walked in there and picked up that money. Somebody like who? I don't know who. Somebody, anybody, maybe whoever took that money took my drawing. Well, take it easy. That's got to be it. You and I were the only ones left alive. And I don't remember anything until I woke up in the hospital, but you were... Let's say, let's say Kylie's telling the truth, that there was money in that suitcase. I tell you, there wasn't any money. When I shot Burkhart, he dropped the suitcase. It broke open right in front of me, nothing but clothes. He dropped it? What was he carrying it for? Why? Why was he carrying it? If he was just trying to get away, what did he want with the suitcase? How should I know? Burkhart was running for his life. He wouldn't have stopped with that suitcase unless there was something in it. Something awfully important. Something that was gone by the time the police got there. Look, Johnny, calm down. Sit down over there. And... You. Sitting in that courtroom. Here behind your fat desk. Letting me die for something you've done, I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Johnny, wait! Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! He's the one! He did it! Make him tell you the truth! He's the murderer, not me! Get him out of here! He Solitary till you hear different! You all right? Yeah. How did it happen? I don't know. He just went sort of crazy. Blame me for his being here. That's the thanks she get for trying to give him a break. And I was just okaying a visit with his girlfriend. He gets no visitors. You bet he doesn't. From now on, he gets no nothing. Might be a good idea if you let the doc check you over. No, I'm okay. Better if the personnel and the inmates don't know what happened. You know what I mean? Okay. I'll see you later. <laughs> You said she was sick. 
Yeah, yeah, Morgan, I... You said she was working in my appeal. That she'd be coming to see me. Well, there's some things that you're better off if you don't you lie, know. Gordon. You've been lying from the beginning. No, no, I was just trying to make it easier. Easier? Sure, easier on yourself. That's Stop all it. you care about, yourself. Stop it, Frank. Stop it, Frank. Stop it, Frank. Just some sandwiches. Thanks, I'm not hungry. I, um, I thought we could talk a little. Not tonight, honey, if you don't mind. I really put in a day today. The uh, McGregor girl was here tonight. Here, what for? What'd she say? She wanted to see you. What right she got coming here? I don't want her bothering you, understand? She wanted to know why you wouldn't let her see Johnny Hutchins. Why you wouldn't see her yourself. He's in solitary. Oh, no. Oh, yes. He tried to kill me in my own office. You want me to give him a medal? But why, Frank? Why should... It doesn't make sense. Well, let me worry about that, okay? But, but I don't understand why... He found out about the money he knows I've got. It's satisfied. Frank. Makes sense now, huh? What do you want me to do? Let him tell that girl about it? Let her tell the police the papers? You want me in that cell instead of him, is that it? Instead of him? Why instead? Oh, Hildy, for heaven's sake, stop jumping on every word. Do I have to come home to a third degree every night? You're saying that boy is innocent. In some way that I can't understand, you know he's innocent. Don't tell me what I know. But you just said... I don't want to hear any more about it. Execution. Everything's got me on edge. What is it, Frank? What haven't you told me? Nothing. There's nothing to tell. Nothing. Believe me. What'll they do to you? Oh, come on now. Stop imagining all of it. I'm afraid, Frank. I've never been so afraid in my life. You're just worn out from all that. Hilda, you're shaking. What are we going to do? Can't we give back the money? I'll, I'll put it somewhere where they'll find it. Oh, don't you worry about that anymore. We may have to leave a little sooner than I want to, but it'll be all right, sweetheart. You'll see. Frank. Frank. What? You. You won't do anything without telling me first. No, of course not. Promise me you won't. All right, I promise. I think we could both use some sleep. No, you, you go ahead. I, I want another cigarette.
Hey, Kylie, why don't you get in the game? Touchdown. Charlie, you did it. Signed, sealed, and delivered a new trial. Oh. <laughs> Dad. Good work. Very good. Now, don't praise me. Feed me. I've been going since breakfast. Okay. Soup's on. Told you Jameson was worth the money. You should have heard him. Oh, I wish there was some way we could get the news to John. The lad's in some kind of trouble. They won't let anyone see him. They won't even tell us what it's all about. Well, that sounds like a little lawyer business, which I'll take care of first thing in the morning. You get double portions of everything. <laughs> hey. Hey, what are you doing? Hey. What's going on? It's a fight. A fight. One more. Get out of here. Wilkins. Yes, sir, everything's okay. Right, check with you in an hour. Gesundheit, <coughs> you really got a loot. I think I have some kind of antihistamine stuck in here someplace.
I get home one night in two weeks, my wife gives me liver. I hate liver. Here's your matches. Let's go. I'll call the shots. Where's the dough? What do you think I do, carry it in my pocket? I know where you can pick up a car and some clothes. Oh, I may never move again. Does Jameson assure you that the new trial will get Johnny off? Oh, Annie, enough. What do you say we give Charlie the rest of the night off? Instead of more questions, how about a cigar? Mm. They don't have guns, like he says. And those clothes, without a car or money, they won't get for them. Are you sure they're unarmed? Well, no, sir, not positive. But... Tom, you know Kylie. He's a lifer. There's nothing more dangerous than a man who has nothing to lose. Yeah, you're right. We'll shoot on sight. We've got to get away. Now, tonight, while there's still time. We don't have to go anywhere. Now, you go on home. Hank, they're hunting for that boy. When they find him, he'll talk and they'll believe him. Maybe. Maybe not. Even if they don't, you wouldn't let him die for something you did. Didn't I know you that well, darling. Sooner or later, you'd give yourself up. You wouldn't let anything happen to him. Look, Kildy, you've got to understand that. I don't want to understand. Unless you do it, I won't. Hildy, please. Right. I, I know about the drawing. I, I took it out tonight and I burnt it. No. It's gone, Frank. It's gone. Not I you. Can't. It can't hurt us anymore. We're safe now. Safe. Frank. Dear God, what have I done to you? You were wrong about me, Hildy. I wasn't going to save that boy. I was going to let them shoot him down in the street. Well, it happened out there in the dark, somewhere where I couldn't see it or hear it, and no one would know. But we'd know, Hildy. We'd see it in each other's eyes the rest of our lives. I want the rest of our lives. Look at me, Hildy. Do you see anything you love? <laughs> I love you, Frank. Yes, I know. And I love you, sweetheart. Wait for me here. Where are you going? Help that boy. Help me, Frank. Help us. This is the only way I can, Hildy. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. The two convicts have not been seen since the daring escape from the state. What'd you expect? Love and kisses? Go in the back. Up the stairs, down the hall, first bedroom to the left. The old man keeps the gun in the bottom drawer of his bureau. How about you? I'll keep him busy in the front. Go ahead. The description of the two men. Joe! Just everybody, stay right where you are. Take it easy. Love of Mike, what did you want to do this for? Yes. My buddy and I need a car and some clothes. Yeah, but? Better not, Mr. McGregor. He's pretty jumpy. Johnny, this is stupid. 
It's insane. Yeah, so's dying. The appeal worked. Charlie won a new trial. Now, don't try to talk me out of this, Annie. I'm sorry the way things worked out. I'm sorry every which way, but I'm not going back there. But what Annie says is true, Johnny. So what if it is? A new trial, but the same lies and the same finish. No thanks. I'm going to start taking care of myself. Got us a wardrobe. How about the car? The keys. We can't leave him standing around. Johnny. Get in the closet in there. Never mind, Annie. I haven't got the time. Rip it out. No, the company would check. Come on, let's go out the back. During the early evening hours, no the guards rarely experience trouble. The first facts indicate that William Kiley, the older of the two companies... Maybe they're out somewhere and don't know what happened. That's funny. Their lights are on. Escape. Police believe that the convicts without money, transportation, or weapons will probably resort to violence to get any one or all of these things. The local townspeople have been warned to lock their cars and stay off the streets. If you see or hear anything suspicious or have reason to suspect you know the whereabouts of these men, you're asked to call the police immediately. The prisoners are disguised as guards, but are expected to seek out some change of clothes. Give me the police, quick. Opportunity. Okay, where to? There's a cutoff south of town. Is the dough out there someplace? Dough can wait. Let's get out of this box. We can't get anywhere without that money. Now, where you got it hid? I don't. Come on, kid. Don't fool with me now. I don't have it. I'm warning you once and for all. The warden's got it. He's had it all the time. The warden, what are you giving me? Come on, Kylie. We've got to get out of here. In the garage. Kinds have a loaded 38, Captain. No extra ammunition. Okay, keep everybody back. Yes, sir. Sure. May I come? Kylie? Hutchins? This is Lieutenant Reynolds. You're completely surrounded. The police have orders to shoot if you try to run. Throw your weapon out first, and then come out one at a time with your hands above your head. If you played straight with me, we wouldn't be in this. You want to talk about it now? Start moving in. Here they come. They got us. They got us good. Give me that gun if you're not going to use it. What are you going to do now? We don't want to risk any more men if we don't have to. A couple of flare pistols will fire the garage and get them out of there. Oh, Dad, don't let them. Frank. They're in the garage. Captain Pauley, Warden Carmichael. Ask your men to stop firing, Captain. But, but, Frank, you said that... I know, Tom, but I think I can talk them into giving themselves up. We've already asked them to surrender, and one of my men has been wounded. There will be more if you try to storm them. My way is worth five minutes. Hold your fire. This is Warden Carmichael, Johnny. I'm asking you and Carly not to do anything until you've heard me out. There are newspaper men out here listening, Johnny. And I'm telling them now that you are innocent. Johnny Hutchins was never part of Burkhardt and Miller's plan to escape. It happened just the way he said it did. He was forced to drive their getaway car. Burkhardt and Miller had money with them. 
stolen money, a hundred thousand dollars. But Johnny Hutchins never knew about that money. I took it. I took it and I buried it before the police came. And with it, I wrapped up and buried the only proof of Hutchins' innocence. His drawing. I couldn't tell anyone about the drawing without giving myself away. So I... I destroyed it. I'm admitting it now, Johnny. All of it. If you come out, we'll wipe out what's happened. What do you say? You're not going anywhere without me. Kylie, if you're keeping him in there, you'll just get both of you killed. You better give yourself up, too. At least you'll walk out of there alive. I'm going out. Okay, kid. Give him this. Tell him I'll come out with no trouble. Tom. Darling, I'm here. I, I, I know I didn't wait for you like you wanted me to, but you mustn't scold me, darling. And, and as soon as you... <laughs> 